Okay, welcome back. Now we're at part four of lecture one of week four, looking at compositional semantics and folds. So we are continuing the discussion of homomorphisms, but uh, we'll do it with a view on data types and their eval functions. So basically DSLs, domain specific languages in its simplest form. Okay. So on the left here, we see a little data type of integer expressions, i.e. And it has three constructors, add, mul, and con. So the syntax here for the data type declaration, I'm using what is called GADT, Generalized Algebraic Data Types. I will provide the corresponding definition as well, uh, just so that um, you don't get confused unnecessarily. So this is the same as saying that add takes two IE arguments, mul takes two IE arguments, and con takes an integer arg argument. So if I reload, this should be the same data type as the one I had before. So the reason I had it in this form, this is the GADT form, is because then you can easily read off the types uh, that we'll be using later of the semantic uh, functions. So if add has the type IE here for three arguments of the same type, then we should have A to A to A on the, in the semantic functions. But let's get back to that. First, let's see what we want to say. We want to define an eval function and the specification here of this eval function. So spec here is for specification. Specification is that the predicate h2 should hold for eva. I write eva instead of eval because there will be several functions here. So I'll just make it not clash with the other eval. So from the syntactic operator add, we should get normal numeric addition. So the, the to do is to implement but we can also, just to remind ourselves, expand. So this is then for all x, y of type. Well, actually, what type? So let's look at the types here. Add takes two IEs to an IE. So both the x and y here are actually of type IE. And then for all of those, we should know that the EVA function applied to add of x and y should be equal to, and here it's the other operator, now it's not the add operator, but the plus operator. So we should have a plus in between calls to eva on x and eva on y. So this just about fits, and this is the expansion then of this. But it's interesting to see it's quantified over syntax expressions of this DSL IE and then it's checking equality on integers after the translation. Oh, sorry, I wrote eval instead of eva. Okay, and of course, very similarly. Um, so first, okay, we require also that the same function eva be a homomorphism from mul to the multiplication of integers. And notice that there's no problem well, I mean, they might be difficult to satisfy it, but we're just putting more and more requirements on the same function eva. So here it just should say mul, and here it should say times multiplication. So these two requirements are, uh, well, the part of specification of this. And I guess we should also probably specify uh, what it should do with the last argument. So we want to say that eva of con c should be equal to c. Well, and one way, one way of doing that is to say that h0 of the same eva of con c should be c. So this there are no for alls in the e, a0, it's just this inequality, and this means that eva applied to con c should be equal to c. And again, if we check the, the types here, con c is a, an ie, 
and c is an integer. Okay, now time to implement it. And I've write, written a type synonym i here for integer. So eva should just take an integer expression to an integer. And not surprisingly, we will start by pattern matching on the three different cases. And the thing is that what I've written here as the internal parts of the uh, H2 axiom or of the H2 um, predicate is actually something very similar to a definition. So I will take this code and insert it down here and then only adjust the double equal is assigned to a single equal sign. So we now define the function eva. If it gets an add of x and y, it will be equal to eva of x plus eva of y. That's an evaluation rule now. And clearly, if it has that as an evaluation rule, the specification will be satisfied trivially. Similarly, for multiplication and the con. So we have now sort of noticed that when we write a specification in terms of these homomorphism predicates, that we're basically saying that the definition of EVA following this shape that I called uh, wish, wishful thinking earlier. But basically, another way of saying it is EVA is a fold. We'll talk more about that later. But now, just to assure ourselves that we have something reasonable here, let's see what EVA is doing. So EVA of E1 and EVA of E2 are just returning the constants. Uh, EVA of E3 adds the two first examples, that's 3. And EVA of E4 is the multiplication of this with itself. So notice that E4 is a syntactic expression and eva of e4 is a just a number, a semantic, uh, semantic expression. Okay, so now we defined a simple starting point to go further. So we would like to move towards a case where we can have a more general setting and not only evaluate this integer expression to integers. We may want to evaluate it to something else. It might not be obvious from the start, but let's try to do that. So the first, the second step here, the first step was implementing EVA. The second step here is to refactor EVA to what I will call EVA2. And I will add the addition, multiplication, and what we have, we had actually as an identity function, transforming C to C here was basically the identity function. We will uh, change these to some arbitrary arguments, add, mul, and con. So I want I want EVA to be a special case of EVA2. So if EVA2 is applied to the correct three arguments, then I should get back EVA. So we can, we can say here as a uh, specification that EVA prime, which then is EVA2 applied to um, addition, multiplication, and the identity function should be the same as EVA. First just type check and uh, we can use or we can sort of write expressions using EVA2 before it is defined and we can type check that they're reasonable but we can of course not check the equality because for that we will need to actually be able to run EVA2. Okay so let's look at EVA2. So this has a perhaps uh, scaring a scary type. Uh, it has three function arguments and then has a type which is recognized. So the three function arguments are well, corresponding to addition, multiplication, the constant case, and then the syntax tree E. So let's see, we can write add mul con and then, well, what should we write here? And there, there, is, there are different ways of doing it. And I will first do it in the sort of cumbersome way and then show the simple way of doing it. Just the cumbersome way, you may be easier for you to recognize. So notice first the type here. So if we give it three arguments, add, mul, and con, it still expects the fourth argument, e. 
So the fourth argument is either add x, y, or if we now copy this down, it's either add mul x, y, or con c. And in each case, we need to provide the right hand side. And we want it to have the same shape. So we actually need to call eva2 of these three arguments on x, a long expression. And we need to call the same, let's, let's, oops, undo. Let's put the same, let's put this in parentheses. And we also need to make a, such a call to y. And we need to combine these two with our addition. So remember from the specification down here, what we like to do is that if we supply the addition being plus, then we should get back to where we were. So this is in the EVA definition, oh, which just got out of screen. Let's scroll up a bit. The addition there is now the add function. And similarly, we should be able to do the same with mal, and we should do something very similar with con of C. Now notice in the third case, there is no recursive call because C is not a syntax tree, it's just an integer, while X and Y are syntax trees. So now this is a rather complex looking function and it also is apparently wrong because I missed an X somewhere. It's good to have the type checker help you. Um, okay, now it type checks. And first, before refactoring it, let's make sure that it actually does the right thing. So remember that we had, for example, E4, and we could run EVA on E4. And we can also run EVA prime on E4. And we get the same nine. Of course, this is not a proof of correctness, but it's not difficult to convince yourself that it actually does the same thing. So as you notice here, uh, we have a very cumbersome notation. So we use this EVA2 um, call with all its arguments in several places. So I will actually um, cut this and try to reconstruct it. But let's to let make it easier to compare. I'll keep it in a comment. But now I will have to start again and say EVA2. Well, it still needs to be given all those three arguments. But then I will say it's equal to, and what? Well, I want it to be equal to EVA. So let's first say, okay, it is equal to EVA, where? And then in the local scope, I say, what should EVA be doing? Well, EVA should do something in the add case and so on. And it turns out that I don't even have to be very uh, sort of inventive here. I just have to take this block of code and splice it in, and then make a very minor change. So what is the minor change? Well, here I used addition for integers, and I want to be more generic. I want to use this addition. So let's just write instead add eva x, eva y. And similarly, the multiplication here should be exchanged with the parameter mul. And then here it's not visible, but I should have the possibility of applying the con, the semantic con function here. And maybe you saw in between that it complained about the types and so on. But now suddenly the types match up. And if we try the same test as before, eva prime of e4, it still gives nine. So these two definitions, the one in the comment and eva2 are sort of basically the same definition. And I think this is this is a helpful way of thinking that you give it a lots of parameter and then you say how you actually do the recursion on the last argument. And the rest of the arguments are kept constant. So they are now in scope for these three definitions, which means I can just keep recursing and it will have those in scope and they are not changing. X and Y are changing all the time. I work myself down the syntax tree, but the three arguments, add, mul, and con, are kept constant. Okay, now we have EVA2, and we know we can apply it to get EVA prime. Uh, well, the EVA, which is EVA prime, which is equal to EVA, but it's a bit boring. Why just apply it to that one? So let's take one more example. 
So here we, I call Eva deep copy. So I want to see, can we take this syntactic expression and give back the same syntactic expression? So basically uh, the pattern that is, uh, is visible here is that we replace the constructor ADD by the function ADD with the lowercase a and similarly lowercase mol, lowercase con. So if we specialize eva2 to the uppercase add mal and con, then eva deep copy, uh, eva deep copy of any expression would just be the same as the expression itself. eva e4, and then we can check what is e4. We can even we can do, even do this. We can check. Are they equal? Uh -huh. Okay, we can check if they're equal, but only if we have an instance of equality. So let's just for, for simplicity here, add deriving EQ and show. I should say warning, uh, be careful with deriving EQ. Uh, the reason to be careful is that sometimes it's not the equality you want. Um, it may be computing a sort of two syntactic equality. Say for rational numbers, you want to treat two rational numbers as equal, even if uh, the numbers stored in the rational number are not equal. So why maybe I should expand that example. Uh, oh, sorry, by the way, this was not the right line of code even. <laughs> Deriving show uh, EQ and show. Uh, the, the example I meant with, with um, rational numbers is if you have a data type, say rat, uh, which is a, a rat with two uh, integers. Integers. And then you would like uh, X1 or R1, which is a rat uh, rat of one two, so one half, and R two, which is a rat two four. You would like uh, test one two. Uh, you would like uh, R one to be equal to R two. And if you do deriving, don't derive EQ here. If you would derive EQ there, then you would get the wrong answer to this test. So instead, you would probably implement the EQ test. Anyway, let's get back to where we were. We, we can now try to reload and check the deep copy. Yes, the deep copy is correct. So why do I call this deep copy? Well, it's deep copy because it, it's this sort of the identity function. So it's equal to id, but more inefficient. So the identity function actually in a lazy language would never look at the value. It would just return it. But this Eva deep copy actually walks through the tree and replaces each add constructor with the add constructor and continuous building. So it uh, could potentially take quite a bit of time. Anyway, it's a useful concept to have. And you can see now that Eva 2 can do more things. But you may say, well, Eva we had before and eva deep copy is just the identity function. This is not very fun. But let's try to do something more interesting, inspired by this even number homomorphism. So let's say that we want to check if a syntactic expression denotes an even number. Or well, we had the odd number in the lecture, uh, previous lecture, but let's do even now for a, for a change. So the specification here if we want to implement an even for integer expressions, which should be basically the same as even the function that checks if a number is even after eva. So let's first check here what is the type of even. So it takes, well, it, <laughs> it takes an integral value, which is one special case is integ integer, and then it returns a Boolean. And what is the type of eva? Well, it returns an integer. So the type of the composition of Eva, no, so it was it Eval, even after Eva uh, is IE to bool. 
Okay, and we would like to have an ev even uh, checker that translates the add constructor to even add, mol to even mol, and some operator even con. And this is clearly, as we saw before, easily done. I mean, if we have this specification that the operator add should be replaced by even add, then we can just implement it directly using eva2. So if we only can define these three helper functions, we're done. So this is uh, the, the fold in action, fold in action, we should say eva2 is often called fold. Okay, so now this is just saying that if we can implement even add, even mol, and even con, doing what we want, then we've, we're through. So let's try, try to implement them. So first question is, what is the types here? What are the types here? So even add should be acting on the result type of even ie, which is a boolean. So it should take a b. I have a b as a synonym for boolean above. And it should take two b's and return a b. And similarly, even mol has the same type and even con is slightly different because it takes an integer and returns a b. Remember, even con here is applied to a constant of type integer. Okay, so now is the question, how do we implement even add? So the specification says that it should compute the evenness of a number where we know what the, of a number which is a sum. So let's let's write this. Even add of the evaluation of. So if we check if we have evaluated x and we have checked the evaluated y then this should be the same as doing um, even, oh, okay, sorry. The function we're defining here is even ie. So even ie of x, even ie of y, and then it should be even ie of add x, y. <clears throat> so we want to check the evenness of a sum of a function of a value which is of the form an addition. So we know actually that if we have if we know if x and y, so this is the evenness of x and this is the evenness of y, and we want to compute if the result is even. So then well we have four possible cases. We have even plus even. Let's List these even plus odd, odd plus e, whoops, id, odd plus even, and odd plus odd. And actually, let's let's do it starting from from the odd plus odd case because that's false here. So this is false, false, and then well, if we add up two odd numbers, we will get an even number. So two non-even numbers add up to a truly even number. And similarly here, if the first is even and the other is odd, then, well, the evenness of a sum of two numbers where only one of them is even, well, it's false. It's not even. So even plus odd is equal to odd. And we have the same here, but the opposite order of the argument. This is also false. So odd plus even is equal to odd. And then finally, even plus even equals even, which means that if we give it two truths, it should return true. So this is a sort of case by case definition of what even add should be doing. We could leave it at this, but we'd also try to see the pattern. So it has true when the two arguments are equal and false 
when the two arguments are different. So we can comment this one out and implement it. Even add as Boolean equality. So when two Boolean values are equal or not. Okay. So this was the requirement. Uh, we have a similar requirement here on multiplication. We need to figure out when are two numbers multiplied together even. So then we have to think, well, if either of them is even, then the product is going to be even. And if either is even, that means that we actually can implement this directly by or. So if either of the inputs is even, the result is even. I mean, we could have done the four different cases and then try to identify. But this is interesting to see that the, we can sort of just work with the booleans here of the evenness of the result. And then finally, as we have a constructor embedding integers into this syntactic data type, we actually also need to do for a real constant C a check. And there we have to do some computation. And I will use mod C2. So that's the modulus when C is divided by 2. It could be 0 or 1 and check that it's zero. So the rem so basically no remainder after division by two. Okay, let's see if this works. We've implemented even add, even mol, and even con. And we've said here already sort of preemptively that if we could implement them, then we could use eva2 to implement the evenness check. So let's do the evenness the even IE check on E1. So let's see what was E1. There was const 1. Okay, that's not even. And then we want to see what is E2 and do the check of evenness of E2. So 2 is even. That's nice. And then what is E3? Okay, that's a sum of 1 and 2. The, that should be odd. So it's not even. And also E4, which was the product of E3 by itself is also um, not even because it's 9 which is odd. And you might wonder here why is it relevant to compute this if we have specified it as being even after EVA. So we could just implement it as even after EVA. So we could have an even IE prime here which is defined as even after EVA. And I mean, uh, even IE prime of E4 gives the same false. I mean, basically, it's, it's always going to be equal to even IE of the same input. Well, yeah, so they are equal. It's true that they're equal. Both are their value false. Okay, so why is it important that? Well, why could it be important to do this? Well, consider the, the case where we defined an, a really big expression. So E big, it could be, um, well, maybe we can actually construct one, but, but let's just give the pattern here. So it's a multiplication of, uh, of um, let's say E big of N is the multiplication of E big of N minus one by itself. So this is then, um, if we start with e big of 0 being equal con 1, say, then this would be building an expression which is a multiplication of uh, a very, well, okay, not con 1, say con 2. It's a multiplication of a very large number of 2s. So actually, let's... let's uh, let this code live here and see wait, see if it works out. So e big 0, e big 1, e big 2. Notice now it's two, four 2s, e big 3, 
Well, now it's eight twos multiplied together. We can also eval this one. It's already 256. If you put four there, it's 65,536. Five, six, seven. Now it's starting to get tiring to compute these numbers. I mean, just representing them in memory after a while will be difficult. You see the double the length of the number in each step. But when we compute even IE um, using EVA2, it will not, the, the computation will not be bigger than the syntax tree. So, uh, so we, we can check the evenness here, even IE of E big 8. Uh, even IE of UV8 is true, and it I mean it, it doesn't really take much time to to compute it. I mean we can we can place maybe 100 is to go too far, but yeah it doesn't seem to be a problem. So notice that E big 100 I would not be able to 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 EVA on this. It would it would work for a long long time to even compute the number. I mean you can see. Already at e big of nine or e big of eight, I'm at 76 or something digits of this number, and it doubles every time I increase this. So e big of 100 is just ridiculously big. It won't be able to, to complete that computation in reasonable time. But when I run even IE on this, it will compute only on the syntax tree. It will compute with Booleans all the time. It would take the syntax tree and replace all the constructors by the even add functions, which will just work with booleans all the way down. So even if the ebig 100 is a rather big uh, binary tree, it is still extremely much smaller than the natural number would be that you would get out of computing it. Okay, so this was illustrating uh, going from the simple data type that we had of IE, whoops, reverse search IE, sorry, data IE. Yeah, from the simple data type IE, we went to a simple uh, evaluator and we generalized it, adding lots of arguments to EVA2, and we showed how that can be used. And we'll take a break now and then we'll continue a little bit more, which, which is the third step.